Okay. So, I'm just share my screen. screen. I'm just sharing my screen. So, Article 1507, it's the classes of documents of title. Okay, as you've mentioned, this is where we stop. But before that, I'm going to paste the attendance form in the chat box. So please make sure you have signed on the attendance form. All right. Okay. So let's go to classes of documents of title. Documents. Okay. Documento. No? We have either negotiable documents or non-negotiable documents. When you say negotiable documents, those that by the terms of which the bailey undertakes to deliver the goods to the bearer and the, the order of a specified person. So the key word is bearer and or to the order of a specified person. And negotiable, non-negotiable documents, those by the terms of which the goods covered are deliverable to a specified only. Here, either the bearer or to the order of, okay? So, negotiation of documents, okay, um, of negotiable documents by delivery. If the document is specific, specially endorsed, it becomes an order document of title. And negotiation can only be effected by the endorsement of the endorsee. So, he has to sign on the document. A special endorsement specifies the person to whom or to whose order the goods are to be delivered. So if it is um, specifying in the endorsement to whom the order, uh, to whom the goods are to be delivered or to whose order, then it's called special endorsement. Okay. So if endorsed in blank or to bearer, the document becomes negotiable by delivery. So whoever bears the document or has or possesses the document and gives it, shall be the um, person who owns or whose order the goods will be delivered. If endorsed to a specified person, it may be again negotiated by the endorsement of such person in blank to bearer or to another specified person. So if uh, the person is specified in the endorsement, the per that person specified should endorse it either in blank to bearer or to another specified person. Person. The delivery is not sufficient if it is already endorsed to a specific person. The delivery alone is not sufficient. It needs to be endorsed because it has a specific person. It's different when it is endorsed to bearer or in blank because whoever bears the document is entitled to endorse it or to deliver it to someone else. Okay? So, the words not negotiable, non-negotiable, and the like when placed upon a document of title in which the goods are to be delivered to order or to bear have no effect and the document continues to be negotiable. Okay. So. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, a non-negotiable title cannot be negotiated. It can be transferred or assigned by delivery. In such case, the transfer or assigning acquires only the rights stated in Article 1514, we'll later on discuss. If the document is endorsed, the transfer acquires no additional right. So, if it is a non-negotiable um, Title okay of negotiable type non negotiable title cannot it cannot be negotiated okay even if it is endorsed there is no acquired additional right so who are the persons who can negotiate okay it will be uh, noticed in that that the provision does not give a power to negotiate documents of title equal to that allowed in the case of bills of exchange and promissory notes under the negotiable instruments law 
However, if the owner good of the goods permits another to have the possession or custody of negotiable receipts running to the order of the latter or to the bearer, it is a representation or title upon which bona fide, uh, upon which bona fide purchasers. Okay, so. Um, It's not like the negotiable instruments in negotiable instruments law, like the bills of exchange or promissory notes. Okay, so but um, a person if he endorses, okay, gives title, um, especially if it's endorsed, okay, and the uh, owner of the goods permits another to have possession or custody of the negotiable receipts running to the order of the latter or to the bearer. So, pwede lang din naman gawin siya. Pero it's not in the same nature as the bills of exchange. The loss must fall upon him whose misplaced confidence made the loss possible. So, kung sino nakawala, siya din yung may uh, burden of the loss. In Article 1513, it specifies the rights of a person to whom a negotiated document of title has been duly negotiated. In the case of a document of title to bearer, or by endorsement and delivery in a case of a document of title. Such person acquires, one, the title of the person negotiating the document over the goods covered by the document, and two, the title of the person, depositor or owner, to whose order by the terms of the document the goods were to be delivered over such goods, and the direct obligation of the baby, the warehouseman or carrier, to hold possession of the goods for him as if the bailey had contracted directly with him. So this is going to be the rights to whom the document has been endorsed, okay, or negotiated. Okay, so um, if you are already the bearer, remember um, this document is a proof that you are the owner of that certain goods. If that document is now endorsed to another person or to bearer, or to the order of a specific person, that person acquires title okay, over that document, over the goods um, covered by that document. You're saying that, okay, hey, whoever possesses and bears this document has the title over the goods, okay? That title of the person, the depositor or owner, um, is transferred to that person who's, uh, who's become the bearer of the document. Okay, the direct obligation of the bailey is now transferred to that person whom the document has been endorsed or been given. Okay, to hold possession of the goods for him as if the bailey had contracted directly with him. So, um, that's the power of the endorsement or negotiation to that person or to that bearer. Okay, so um, in Article 1514, as discussed earlier, it refers to the rights of a person to a negotiable document of title not duly negotiated has been transferred or of the transfer of a negotiable document such person acquires. Okay, the title to the goods as against the transfer, the right to notify the bailey of the transfer thereof, and the right thereafter to acquire the obligation of the bailey to hold the goods for him. Okay, so it specifies here the title to the goods as against the transferor. So if you are the transferor of the document, you cannot contest that because you are the one who transferred the document to the next person. But against all other persons prior or claiming uh, ownership over the document and the goods, um, there is no... Um, what is that? Uh, where well, there is no other defense because it was not properly negotiated. It was not duly negotiated. Okay. Um, if we go back to 1511, okay, a negotiable, non-negotiable, uh, a non-negotiable document of title cannot be negotiated. It can be transferred or assigned by delivery. Okay. In such case, the transferee or assignee acquires only the rights stated in Article 1514. If you look at 1514. This is the effect, okay? If it is not duly negotiated or it's as if, uh, if the document of title is not non-negotiable, 
these are the rights okay and then you notice here there are rights of the third person to goods where the document has been transferred okay so as to third persons the transfer does not affect the delivery of the goods covered it before notification the bailey is not bound to the transferee okay whose right may be defeated by a levy of an attachment or execution upon the goods by the creditor or the transferor so it's not safe if you are holding a document of uh, non-negotiable document of title okay which means that um, you're only entitled in so far as against the transferor but as to third parties or third persons you do not hold much ground because it's not duly negotiated or it is a non-negotiable document of title if the document is negotiable the goods cannot be attached or levied under an execution unless the document is first surrendered to the bailey or its negotiation join so you will also notice here the bailey the warehouse man if it's in article 13 uh in 15 um 13 okay if it's duly negotiated you will notice here as if the bailey has personally contracted directly with the person who now bears the document okay the transferee here the transferee has now has acquired no legal right over the bailey until the transferee has informed okay the bailey to hold the goods for him pursuant to the rights of the transferor to him okay the right to notify the bailey of the transfer thereof but still it is subject to or notwithstanding any claims by any other third persons over the document over the goods um, subject covered in the document kasi it is not one it is not a non uh, it is not a negotiable document of title and second it is not duly negotiated okay it does not affect if you go back to 1511 even if the document is endorsed the transfer acquires no additional right so not because it was endorsed to you specifically you will acquire as if you are in situated in the person in 1513 okay which is duly per, uh, persons who whose doc, uh, whom the document has been endorsed or negotiated um, in this case kasi the document negotiated is a negotiable document of title while in 1511 it's a non-negotiable document of title so what will take effect is the provisions in 1514 okay the document is negotiable here in provisions in under number two the goods cannot be attached or levied that's the difference if you are if you have the negotiable or non-negotiable document of title so transfer of order document without endorsement it specifies in article 1515 it specifies the right of a person to whom an order document of title which may prop may not properly be negotiated by mere delivery has been delivered without endorsement okay these are the effects the right to the goods against the transfer and the right to compel the transfer to endorse the endorsement if you want to play it safe you compel the transfer to endorse it to you okay Kung wala siyang endorsement, okay, it specifies the right of a person to whom an order document of title. If it's an order document of title, it's, it says in the document whose order it should be that the goods will be delivered, okay, to the order of. But if the document of title is transferred by mere delivery, the delivery of the thing has the effects of or would grant the rights of the transferee okay the right to the goods against the transferor if there's a dispute between the transfer and the transferee over the goods the transferee would now hold claim because he is the possessor of the document of title but remember the transferee the one who received the document may actually compel the transferor to endorse the document okay to endorse the transfer to endorse the document yan to endorse the document okay in, in me, meaning that he the transferor the one who gave the document of title 
to endorse and specify that um, please release the goods to the order of the transferee, okay? It should be specified. And it is the right of the transferee to compel the transfer. Okay. If the intention of the parties is that the document should be merely transferred, the transferee has no right to acquire the transfer to acquire the transfer to endorse the document okay or to require the transfer to endorse the document uh, this is an exemption if the intention of the parties is that the document should be merely transferred so wala siyang right wala yung number two dito sa taas subsequent endorsement of negotiable document transferred the negotiation shall take effect as of the time when the endorsement is actually made not at the time the document is delivered Again, the negotiations shall take effect as of the time when the endorsement is actually made, not at the time when the document is delivered. So, because this is the case where it was just transferred and there is no endorsement. But if the transferee chooses to compel the transfer to endorse, the effect is from the time of the endorsement, not from the document delivery. The reason is because the negotiation becomes complete only at the time of the endorsement. Okay, under Article 1516, it treats the warranties or liabilities of a person negotiating or transferring a document. Okay, the liability is limited only to a violation of the four warranties. That the document is genuine, that he has a legal right to negotiate or transfer it, that he has knowledge of no fact which would impair the validity or worth of the document. So he is in good faith. And that he has a right to transfer the title to the goods and that the goods are merchantable or fit for a particular purpose. Whenever such warranties would have been implied if the contract of the parties had been to transfer without a document of title, the goods represented thereby. Okay, so these are the liabilities okay, limited only to the four warranties. Huh? As to endorsers are um, not a guarantor in Article 1517, it says that the endorsement of a negotiable instrument has a double effect. The endorser will pay the instrument if the party primarily liable fails to do so. Okay, the endorsement of a document of title amounts merely to a conveyance of the endorsed by the endorser, not a, not a contract of guarantee. So when negotiation impaired by fraud. Okay, so under 1518, it may be negotiated by even a thief or finder and the holder thereof would acquire a good title thereto if he paid value therefore in good faith without notice of the seller's defect. So wala siyang knowledge that it was stolen, that it was it was an effect of a theft, then it is um, the buyer or the acquirer of the document of title acquires um, good title to it, meaning it's acquired the negotiable document of title in good faith. He has no knowledge. It speaks of the theft of the document and not of the goods covered by such document. Okay? Hindi po yung goods ang ninakaw, yung document ang ninakaw. Okay. It needs no argument to show that even a bona fide, um, Holder of a document issued over such stolen goods cannot acquire title. Okay, so if the goods are stolen, okay, in the latter case, it needs an argument to show that even a bona fide holder of a document issued over such stolen goods cannot acquire title of course because it's already been stolen okay so attachment or levy upon goods covered by a document um, in the possession of such bailey the goods cannot be attached or levied under an execution unless the document be first surrendered or its negotiation prohibited by law or this provision is for the protection of the bailey since he could be made liable to a subsequent purchaser for a value in good faith so, hindi rin siya basta-bastang ma-release ni Bailey, okay? 
the bigly should require that the document be the um, first surrendered or its negotiation is already prohibited by law. Creditors remedies to reach uh, to negotiate. Okay, this article expressly gives the court full power to aid by injunction, a restraining order, and otherwise a creditor seeking to get a negotiated uh, negotiated document covering such goods. Okay, it's the court okay, who can intervene. Place of delivery of the goods. The rule is where there is an agreement. Express or implied the place of delivery is that agreed upon. Where there is no agreement, the place of delivery is that determined by usage of trade. Where there is no agreement and there is also no prevalent usage, the place of delivery is the seller's place of business. In any other case, the place of delivery is the seller's residence. To the knowledge of the parties at the time of the contract was made where in some other place, that place is the place of delivery in the absence of any agreement or usage of trade to the contrary. Okay, presumptions in 1521, it can be seen that the presumption is that the buyer must take goods from the seller's place of business or residence rather than the seller to deliver them to the buyer. This is the presumption, okay? What is the time of delivery of the goods? Okay, according to the law, if no time is fixed by the contract, then the seller is bound to send the goods to the buyer within a reasonable time. If the contract provides a fixed time for performance, the question is whether time is of the essence, and if so, whether the correct performance was offered within that time. If time is not of the essence, the question is whether correct performance was offered within a reasonable time. If time is of the essence within that time, okay, specified, um, if, ta is, if time is not of the essence, then it is within a reasonable time. Where the contract does not specify the time for delivery, so that delivery is to be made within a reasonable time, the buyer cannot make time the essence of the contract without giving the seller notice of his intention to cancel unless delivery is made on or before a fixed time. Okay, so it should be fair okay, to both parties and the seller should know that the buyer actually requires the goods within a specific time. Okay, usually if it's in case of an event upcoming, so it is, needs to be specified that it needs to be delivered at this specified time. You cannot deliver it after because after that it becomes useless if it is for a specific event. Okay. 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 Also in Article 1521, delivery of goods in possession or, or a third person of a third person. To affect to affect third person, the person holding the goods must acknowledge being the bailiff for the buyer. Okay. Well, hour of delivery of goods sold, the demand or tender of delivery to be effectual must be made at a reasonable hour. Wag naman yung siguro hating gabi yung kailangan mo i-deliver talaga 12 midnight. Okay? So, within a reasonable hour. The reasonable hour, usual usual time of business where per people are actually working. What is a reasonable hour where all that is required by the other party is to receive a payment or performance which can be readily be accepted. In case of goods which be, are bulky or need special care, an hour might be reasonable which would not be so, in an ordinary payment of a small amount of money. What are the duties to a seller to put goods in deliverable condition? The seller bears the expenses to place the thing in a deliverable state that is, in such a state, the buyer would, under the contract, be bound to take delivery of, the, of them. 
Okay? Wala nga naman pag nag-deliver, siguro ka ng bigas, di ba? Um, dump truck, tapos wala man lang siya naka-persa. So, ang hirap naman, di ba? So, that should be something that the buyer should be able to take in after um, during delivery. In 1522, the delivery of goods less than quantity contracted. Okay, so where the seller delivers a smaller quantity, the buyer may reject the goods so delivered. You have the right to refuse the delivery because it's missing something. Okay, or you are not compelled to accept partial delivery. The buyer may accept the goods in which case he must pay for their one price at the contract rate if he knew that no more were to be delivered or the fair value of the goods. If he did not know, the seller is going to be guilty of a breach of contract. Then delivery of goods more than quantity contracted. What is the right of the buyer? Okay. The buyer may accept the quantity contracted for and reject the excess. Sabi niya kung 100 sacks of rice lang yung order niya, yung 100 sacks of rice lang. Kung 150 ang diniliver, pwede niyang i-reject yung 50. If he accepts all the goods delivered, he makes himself liable for the price of all of them. Pero kung tinanggap niya yung 150 sacks of rice na diniliver instead of 100 na in order, then he can be compelled to pay the price of all of the 150 sacks of rice. Delivery of goods mixed with others. What if the delivery is mixed with other items? Okay, not ordered. The buyer may accept those which are in accordance with the contract and reject the rest. And of course, may accept them all if he so desires. Pwede lang din yung tanggapin. Let's look at an example. So, S sold to B, 200 uh, cabans of rice at 1,000 per caban or for a total price of 200,000. 200 for 1,000 pesos. Delivery to be made at the place of business of B. If S delivers only 120 cabans, B can refuse to accept them. If he accepts them, knowing that B is not going to perform the contract in full, he is liable to pay the rate of agreed upon for the 120 cabans, or he will be compelled to pay 120,000 pesos. But if B was not aware that full delivery would not be made, he would be liable only for the fair value to him of the goods at the time of delivery, even if it should be less than the contract price. Okay. Of course, in another option, B cannot be liable in any case for more than the contract price of 120,000 with respect to the 120 covenants actually received by him. Okay. Another example, S, a domestic corporation, alleges that B, a general partnership, refused to pay the price of various automat automotive products with the latter claiming that it had not received the merchandise. It appears that upon receipt of the bill of lading, B initiated but did not pursue steps to take delivery as it was advised by NN Company, owner of the vessel on which the spare parts were loaded by S forwarding agent that because some parts were missing, they would just be informed as soon as the missing parts were located. Okay. So, it complicates things because S and B are the original parties and then there's an involved third party, NN company, okay? So, here they said that B, the buyer, refused to pay the price, sabi ni seller, okay? Because B said they, they did not receive the merchandise. After looking at or investigating, it appears that there was a receipt of a bill of lading. Okay, B initiated but did not pursue because of um, the advisory of an end company. The vessel, okay, owner of the vessel on which the spare parts were loaded. So, because they're trying to locate. Okay, so unless it can be located, they won't um, have it delivered. So it was only f four years later when a warehouseman of NN found in its bodega parts of the shipment in question, 
but already deteriorated and valueless. Sabi naman yan, 4 years after pa nakita. So, the issue would be, under the circumstances, can be be faulted for not accepting or refusing to accept the shipment from NN 4 years after shipment. Okay, magiging kasalanan ba ni B? Okay, kung magre-refuse siya? Answer would be no. NN could not produce the merchandise nor ascertain its whereabouts at the time. B was ready to take delivery. Four years after is not within reasonable time, isn't it? From the evidentiary record, NN was the party negligent in failing to deliver the complete shipment to B, who was never placed into the control and possession of the same, where the seller delivers to the buyer a quantity of goods less than he contracted to sell, the buyer may reject them. So in this case, since at the time that B was actually ready to receive the goods, the goods is not is missing something, the spare parts, the, the parts that was missing. So NN company cannot locate, so therefore cannot deliver it completely. And remember in the previous provision, okay, delivery of goods less than quantity contracted, okay, the buyer can actually reject the goods so delivered. So in this case, B is just right to reject that delivery. And therefore, the seller okay, cannot compel B to pay the price because to B, really, there was no actual delivery, full delivery, complete delivery of the goods ordered. So here, B cannot be faulted for not accepting or refusing to accept the shipment from NN four years after the shipment because remember okay um time of delivery the time of delivery okay it should be at the reasonable time do you think four years after is reasonable enough i don't think it is okay order ka four years after pa siya i-deliver just ko di ba to complain ka na ngayon kung hindi mo na deliver yung lazada mo within two weeks di ba Ano ba yan? Umabot na ng isang buwan, di ba? So, and if, especially if they promised an earlier date of delivery. So, I don't think the four years, okay, or the courts, think, I do, the courts does not think that the four years is um, within reasonable time. And in this case, B was upheld um, and cannot be faulted for not accepting or refusing to accept the shipment from NN, okay, four years after the shipment. It's just not reasonable. Okay, another example, okay, if in the preceding example here in the 200 cabans, if S delivered 250 cabans of rice, B may accept only 200 and reject the rest. Okay, kasi 200 lang naman ang in order. If he accepts the entire delivery, of course, he will be compelled to pay 250,000 for the 250 cabans. Okay. Another example, the contract calls for the delivery of a con of a quantity of almasica or mastic of less than 500 pickles. Okay. Is the delivery of 500 pickles sufficient compliance with the contract? Yes, as the law takes no account for of trifles, the minimis non corat less. It is obvious that the discrepancy may be disregarded and therefore the buyer cannot escape liability on account of such trifling difference. Okay, of less than 500 because so from 500 the um, it should be accepted okay it is reasonable next in article 1522 the effect of indivisibility of subject matter it can be inferred from our law that the buyer has the right of rejecting the whole of the goods delivered in the two cases mentioned only if the subject matter is indivisible okay Rules may be controlled by the usage of trade, permitting evidence of usage of trade, special agreement or course of dealing between the parties is but a special application of the general rules concerning contracts, kung meron man um, special agreement, okay? So let's look at examples again. S agreed to sell to be a live carabao with a weight of not less than 100 kilos but not more than 120 kilos. S delivered a carabao weighing 130 kilos. Okay. B may reject the carabao because there is a specification. 
If the agreement is S to deliver wag wag rice mixed with corn of a particular variety and the rice or corn delivered is of a different variety, Bay may reject the whole, the whole of the goods. Why? Because it should be wag wag rice mixed with corn of a particular variety. Okay, if it's different variety, it can be rejected. Next, in 1523, the delivery to ca carrier on behalf of the buyer. Okay. General rule when the seller is authorized or required to send the goods to the buyer is that delivery of such goods to the carrier constitutes delivery to the buyer whether the carrier is named by the buyer is not. Okay, upon delivery of such goods to the carrier, it constitutes delivery to the buyer. Whether the carrier is named by the buyer or not. Okay. Exception, the parties did not intend the oops. The exception is if the parties did not intend the delivery of the goods to the buyer to the carrier. Okay. So generally if there is a delivery of the goods to a carrier, the general rule is that upon delivery of the goods to the carrier, it already constitutes delivery to the buyer. Provided that the buyer did not specify a carrier therein, okay? Unless, of course, there is an agreement with the parties that it will not be going through a delivery through a carrier, okay? What is the duty of the seller after delivery to carrier to enter on behalf of the buyer into such contract reasonable under the circumstances? The seller must make such contract with the carrier on behalf of the buyer as may be reasonable under the circumstances. So the basic rules on um, the cargoes or carrier contracts shall apply here. To give notice to the buyer regarding necessity to insure goods, the seller must give notice to the buyer as may enable him to ensure the goods during their transit. If the seller fails to do so, the risk will be borne by the seller. Okay, so the seller you just um, inform if there is a need for insurance. Okay, but there are basic um, warranties in the carrier's contract of delivery. No, upon the upon the receipt of the goods by the carrier from the seller okay so how about article uh, 1523 in terms of definition of trade terms um, COD meaning collect uh, collect on delivery or cash on delivery is most commonly termed for COD no? uh, the carrier acts for the seller in collecting the purchase price the buyer must pay for the goods before he can obtain possession they are solely intended as security for the purchase price. Collect on delivery, meaning upon delivery, the person who delivered will collect. Okay, FOB, free on board, means that the goods are to be delivered free of expenses to the buyer to the point where they are FOB. In general, the point FOB either the point of shipment or the point of destination. Okay. Um, some of you may be familiar of this when you discussed your merchandising concern and you were discussing about inventories and you were discussing in your financial accounting regarding inventories, who owns the inventories. Uh, it depends on the FOB terms, right? If it's FOB shipping point, it's the owner who already owns the inventory or the items while well, if it is FOB destination the transfer of ownership happens only upon the arrival of the goods at the delivery point okay or at the point of destination okay it determines the ownership passes okay CIF cost insurance and freight signify that the price fixed covers not only the cost of goods but the expenses of freight and insurance to be paid by the seller 
up to the point specially named. FAS meaning free alongside vessel, okay, named port of shipment. Under this term, the seller pays all charges and bear the risk until the goods are placed alongside overseas vessel and within reach of its loading tackle. X factory, X warehouse, etc. Name point of origin. The price quoted applies only at the point of origin, excluding the factory's costs or a warehouse. And the seller agrees to place the goods at the disposal of the buyer at the agreed place on the date within the period fixed. X dot name port of importation. The seller quotes a price including the cost of goods on the dock at the name port of importation. In Article 1524, um, it discusses the delivery simultaneous with payment of price and when delivery must be made before payment of the price. So the general rule, the obligation to deliver the thing of a contract arises from the moment it's perfection and from that time the obligation may, import, may be enforced. Again, the obligation to deliver of the, the thing of a contract arises from the moment it's perfection and from that time the obligation may be enforced. Okay. Exception is if the vendee and buyer does not pay the price and the consideration for the obligation of the vendor is absent and if the consideration is absent, the obligation likewise does not exist or at least is suspended. So when delivery must be made before payment of the price, it contains an exception. The rule is that the thing shall not be delivered unless the price is paid. That's the rule. And the exception is that the thing must be delivered th though the price be not first paid if a time for such payment has been fixed in the contract. Kung ang agreement naman is, um, you deliver right now and then I will pay you later on, then the delivery of the thing sold arises right now even if there is no payment yet. But general rule really is it's a bilateral contract. It's reciprocal. The moment I pay, you also deliver. Or the moment I deliver, you also pay. That's the general rule. The exception is if it is specified in the contract, the payment is not necessary for the delivery to take effect. So the delivery should happen first before the payment if it is so specified in the contract. That's Article 1524. For 1525, it speaks about the meaning of unpaid seller. Okay, Unpaid seller is one who has not been paid or tendered the whole price or has received a bill of exchange or other negotiable instrument as conditional payment and the condition in which it was received has been broken by reason of dishonor of the instrument. So, si Marjorie ito, unpaid seller. Pero ngayon, paid seller na siya, di ba? yung sa um, viral video example natin okay so unpaid seller o oh, yan definition example yan si Marjorie yung nag-deliver na siya ng goods the food package but she was not paid yun okay where whole of the price has not been paid ah ito more likely si Marjorie ito talaga whole of the price has not been paid she was partially paid 9,000 di ba so Tender of payment of buyer being an action subsequently for the price which he has refused, yet tender destroys the seller's lien. Accordingly, so far as concerns his rights to the goods, he is not unpaid seller after the tender of the price. So, what he or she will do okay, to effect this tender of payment of buyer, so because she was partially paid, um, the tender was actually that point where Marjorie said, I could have given you back the 9,000 had you just returned the, the food. No? Uh, so, but the tender is really to give it to authority and saying, I, will, I am rejecting this payment because this is not the complete amount of the agreed amount that we have previously contracted or agreed. Okay? Payment of part of price. The seller remains an unpaid seller if even if title has passed to the buyer. Okay, payment of part of the price. The seller remains an unpaid seller even if title has passed to the buyer. In that case, the title has passed to the buyer. Diba? Nasa mesa na nga yung food eh. Diba? Payment by negotiable instrument. The delivery of promissory notes payable to order 
or bills of exchange or mercantile documents shall produce the effect of payment only when they have been cashed or went through the fault of the creditor they have been impaired. So remember in this case, um, do you guys have already your negotiable instruments law? Hello? Are you guys familiar with negotiable instruments law? Yes or no? You did not have your negotiable instruments law yet? Ah. Is this your second law subject? Third, sir. What was the second? Partnership and corporations. Okay, so you did not take up negotiable instruments law yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, it's good to know that you're not familiar with negotiable instruments law because in the negotiable instruments law or in the negotiability of instruments in the discussion there you should uh, you should know there or when you get to that point you will be able to know that the negotiable instruments are not legal tender okay uh, example check a check is not a legal tender in the philippines and therefore its effect to extinguish an obligation okay if you are going to discuss um, obligations and contracts an obligation when or what are the modes of extinguishment of an obligation okay one of the modes of extinguishment of an obligation or debt is to payment and payment by check does not automatically extinguish a debt or an obligation it will only take effect under this provision in article 1525 the obligation is extinguished only upon the cash okay in cashment of the checks or the negotiable instruments or another case if when the through the fault of the um, creditor in this case the seller the document or the instrument has been impaired but prior to that or without those provisions or without those conditions or circumstances the check used as payment does not affect as extinguishment of an obligation okay okay so that was the first topic okay um fortnite any questions from you guys so far